Good evening, good evening. We do have a very special live show. I have someone very special setting off in the wings right this moment. We've just been chatting about reselling in general. Um, before we get to the main topic at hand, just a few updates. I do have um, everybody uh, addressed on Patreon. I did throw out some questions on some of the items you got up there too. So if you have a chance and if anybody else too has any other questions or posts, if you post them today by tomorrow, I'll have them all addressed. I do have another eye doctor appointment tomorrow, so I will probably not be doing much after I get back and I may take off Saturday, depending on what they do. So just an FYI, I may be uh, uh, AOL for just a day or so on Saturday. Um, usually I do put up videos on Saturday. I may take two days off. I don't know with what's going on. So just an FYI. Um, a few other topics here. There are some links to uh, Mark's actual site down below. Uh, we'll go into that in a little while here. I have been using this platform for well over a year. Those in Patreon, I know you've seen it. We've talked about it before on many, many different occasions. I know quite a few of you did sign up also. I, I have preached this aspect of reselling in general for quite some time. If it doesn't sink, it, it's a nuisance. Anything that causes you grief to me it isn't something I want to mess with. There is a sink, and this is the thing that drew me into HIP right off the bat, that automatically adjusts your inventory and ends the item on eBay or vice versa. It pays you through PayPal. So for those of you who like to get your money and not have it held by other companies when you do payments, you don't have to worry about that. Um, again, I, I've been on there for well over a year. I just did a video yesterday on things that I sold on that site for very good money. Um, I've never, I'm not saying this, I'm not paid to say this. Nobody's giving me a dime to say any of these words I'm saying today, but I've never had an issue on the platform that I can honestly think of. It's not a headache. I just turn it on every morning. I check my sales. I mail out what goes and that's it. That's been my life using the site. So truth, that's literally what, what I've said well before I've ever heard from anybody personally from, from the hit platform. Um, so uh, again, I wouldn't preach this out here if I didn't actually use it. This is actually the first person I've ever had on from a platform. I've refused the big ones like people from Am or, uh, from eBay on numerous occasions. This one's the real deal. He, he's a nice guy. He's given me information that, that you know, is, is valid and he, he knows his stuff. So but without further ado, I am going to bring him on. We'll let him introduce himself and we will get to some questions. We're going to try and get through as many as we can. And I'm going to leave some time at the end since I already see some comments and questions in here um, to uh, hopefully ask some questions of everybody here. So let's bring him on and let him introduce himself. Hey, Don, thanks for having me. I'm Glad Mark to have Rosenberg, you. CEO and founder of Hippie Commerce. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit of your history? Sure, happy to do that. So I've actually been involved in e-commerce and collectibles for about 25 years. Back when eBay was first coming out in 1996, my father is an accountant, but he has always been a part-time stamp dealer as well. So in 1996, I convinced him to start a business with myself, buying and selling stamps on eBay. So we we're doing that for quite a while, uh, quite a few years. We were pretty successful. Then during that time, I wound up graduating with a degree in computer science from Rutgers University. So shortly after that, kind of as a hobby, I wanted to start a small marketplace of my own. So I actually started a website that was called bidstart.com, which I wound up then selling in 2012 to Stanley Gibbons. Stanley Gibbons is the largest collectible stamp deal in the world based out of the UK. I went to work for them for a few years, left there in 2015. And about a year after that, I had the idea for hippie commerce. And my whole idea for hippie commerce is that if you think about collectibles, it's such a huge market. Hundreds of billions of dollars of collectibles are bought and sold each year. But but at the end of the day, I felt that each collectible is so unique from the next and the way that people collect one from the next is also so different that if you try to just create a marketplace for all collectibles, at best, you really just have kind of like a watered down version of eBay and you couldn't really create anything special for anyone. So my whole idea was to instead build specific individual marketplaces that could be completely customized to specific types of the collectibles. So that way, everything from the browse and search experience, the branding, everything would just work and deliver those exceptional experiences for specific types of collectibles and collectors. Let, let, having used the site, 
having played with it for quite some time, it reminds me, and I'm, I'm not throwing this out here lightly, this honestly reminds me the old days of eBay when you just get on eBay and you don't have any of the other uh, bureaucracy that you have to deal with these days. Um, it, it actually does does what he says. As someone who does collect occasionally myself, as many of you probably know, to find something on you know eBay sometimes can be very daunting. On on hip, if you want to find your listings or anybody's, it's pretty easy with just basic keyword searches. I have to say, uh, again, this is this is the truth. This is my honest opinion on it, as I've said for quite some time. So let, let's go on to some goals for the future, and then we're going to pop back and forth here. I want to get some well-rounded well-rounded questions in here. What's your goal, and where do you see yourself? I guess in five years for the platform, where are you leading the platform at? We we see a lot of different changes with other platforms out there. I just want to want to hear where your goal, where you're going from with it. Right. So great question. So it kind of I'll answer that in two parts. So one, the way that we've you know built of our websites is essentially there's one core platform that has a similar experience across the three sites. But then from there, we really work to develop custom features that really deliver those exceptional experiences. And that could just be something really small or something really large. So I'll give a couple quick examples. On the small side, if you think about a comic book or a stamp, uh, they're typically a portrait. If you think about postcard, typically landscape. So if you're on hip stamp or hip comic and you search for any items, you're gonna see four items across and they're all portrait. Whereas on hip postcard, you're gonna see three items across and they're landscape. So again, it's this really subtle difference. Um, but to your point, then when you're you know searching for postcards or comics or stamps, it just works and you're just you know, getting a little bit extra that you could when you are focusing on these specific collectibles. So on the larger side, which is a great example of some of the things that we're going towards in the future, is then you can start really understanding some of these you know different pain points and difficulties that buyers and sellers have. So a great example is a, a feature that we're in beta right now on our hip comic site, and we're gonna have a full launch soon around our comic book image recognition feature. And the way that that works and the reason why we built it is that we realized in particular, uh, many comic book dealers, whether they're you know brick and mortar or online only, often have you know certain more expensive items that they're selling on a regular basis. And then they might have just long boxes of, of you know hundreds, thousands, in one case, five million comic books just sitting in a, a, in a garage. And for the most part, those weren't really easy to sell because it just took too much time. So we developed our comic book scanning feature. So on hip comic, you can create a listing by just taking a picture. And this works on either the desktop version. If you have a tablet, you take a picture of a comic book, instantly we'll fill in the volume, the issue number, the genre, the main character, everything that you need. So it's about you know five to six times faster to create a listing with us than it will be on other platforms. And that's specifically on comics. And that's a feature that's specific to our comic site. So where we're taking the platforms over the next five years is we're going to continue to improve the platforms themselves. We're actually about to launch a new sell your item um, page in the near future that's a lot more streamlined, has all the exact same features, but just much, much faster. So we're going to be looking to just continue to improve the platform itself kind of generically, but then also continue to build out features like we've done with comic book scanning feature and more features around that that are really you know specific for each of the different sites that we have. Yeah, the com most everybody out there listening, if you at least for me, I've got a set dollar amount. And sometimes I won't list comics individually or records or any of the stuff I list if the value of the item isn't a set amount because it wouldn't be worth my time. But if the time can be cut down to a mere taking a photo or something, that would be a game changer in my book. I got I got long boxes when you said long boxes. I've got I've got like 5,000 comics here myself that are just going to be for sale. So a lot of it's cheaper stuff. But if I could It'd be worth buying a phone almost, I guess, that that does that easier. I'm not an Apple person, but I know the Apple works great on that. But right. very good. I'm, I'm, that's interesting. As I say, I've got Dom Primetime Treasure. I don't know if he's in the house today, but uh, Dom, as most people you know, is a big comic guy as well, too. L long boxes. I'm sure he's got stacks of those in, in his place as well. Now, let's let's hit on current events for just a minute here. How has your site weathered the pandemic? I know a lot of people me as well have actually increased our sales from this point um in the 15 20 percent year over last where would where would hip fall in that has this been a big boost i mean are you getting a a new influx of of customers i guess right. both buying and selling from the pandemic itself yeah i think overall we definitely um saw a pretty significant 
boost, I would say, in, in April and May. Um, I think, you know, at first when the pandemic started, you know, just you know, discretionary spending as a whole, people were, were quite cautious and not spending as much. But I think that once we got into to April, then it was quite different because, you know, particularly on the stamp and, and comic side, you look at the stamp side, there's not really many brick and mortar stamp shops, but there are uh, conventions that happen on you know, every every weekend across the country. Uh, auction houses are also running their auctions typically at conventions. So all of a sudden, all of these different venues where people were looking to purchase stamps just you know ceased to to be operating for a good part of the year, if not longer. So we definitely saw an increase. I would say you know within that first month, I would agree probably something similar, 15, 20 percent um, just within between you know March, April, and May. Similarly on the comic book side. Um, large amount of, of brick and mortar comic book shops in, in the US in particular, and those were all suddenly closed as well. Uh, so similarly, we saw more people coming onto the site and you know purchasing more online again in that you know, April, May period. Yeah, and, and now I've been saying this because our sales are up and a lot of folks were having issues with it depending on what you sell. And the biggest thing I get and I hear all the time is that, you know, I, I can't believe you get that for your items. If you've never dealt in collectibles or you're just now getting into them, collectors collect. They don't care what's going on. If if I had, we in fact, we were just talking about that. I used to order from Mile High Comics when I was a kid. Every extra quarter or anything I could get, I would be sending away for 10 cent Batmans from, you know, Silver Age or before, hopefully 12 cents were fine, but I'd rather have the 10 cent. And that's what I did with every dime. And collectors are, I'm obsessed with certain things. And if I'm obsessed with them, you know, and I got the extra money. I don't care. I'm not thinking sometimes. And a lot of the collectors are more gung ho, and and you'll see a difference between buying a new Potter pan. A lot of people would rather buy a Batman number 27 or Detective 27 or something or whatever the case may be. People are investing too, from what I see. So I mean, it's a perfect perfect right. uh, influx for collectibles uh, with the the CGC and the grading and the the investments in comics these days are gone insane. I've I've seen. Yes threefold increases on prices for like 9.7s and, you know, high grade comics, which you'd have never, it's almost shocking uh, uh, to me. It is to, you know, growing up in the old school days, going to the comic store and picking out the vintage ones or sending away for them. That used to be the whole, whole aspect of it. Um, now on the experience, would you say with all the effort that the, the main aspect is going into ease of the site for both the buyer and the seller, one of the big problems like on eBay or any other sites is it's all geared towards what eBay thinks the seller wants without input from the actual people who are selling, who are help making the site, the site. Where do you see yourself falling in that range? I mean, are you worrying about both aspects and not just the buyer's experience as well as the seller's experience? Right, absolutely. We definitely look at, you know, the buyer and seller experience. And then we also look at ways where we can, you know, develop technology that helps both. So a great example of this is on HipStamp. On HipStamp, we realized that most stamp collectors are searching for country and catalog number. And the problem with you know, sites such as eBay is they're just doing keyword searches. So for example, even if you go into the stamp category on eBay and you type in US number one, which is one of the most popular US stamps to collect, about 99% of the results are just completely inaccurate. But on HipStamp, if you go in and you type in US number one, 99% of the results are accurate. And the reason for that is we actually developed a custom search engine that will automatically extract out the country and the catalog number when you're searching. So we're not actually doing a keyword search. You're just typing in keywords, but we're identifying the country and the catalog number, and then we're matching that up directly to the country and catalog number on the listings themselves. And that kind of goes to the selling part of it. The way that we did that is we realized that you know on other marketplaces, you might have item specifics that either you could set or in some cases you're forced to set. And in many cases, when buyers are then looking for items, those are just either missing, like 99% is not specified, or they're just often wrong. So what we try to do is also automatically set all that to make it easy, even easier for the seller. So on our hip stamp site, when you create a listing, uh, just from the title alone, we're able to extract out the country catalog number. We can build additional information around that, such as like year, um, type of stamp, and, and other pieces around that. And similarly, that's exactly what we do on Hip Comic as well. So every listing that you create on our site now does go through our comic scanning feature. So as soon as you, you know, take the photo, everything's filled out for you. Again, you can add and customize that information, but all those item specifics are mostly going to be filled out for you, particularly the volume, the issue number, and the publisher, as well as the main character and genre. So 
that's exactly what we try to do is look for ways where we can improve both the buyer experience and seller experience. And the way that I've always looked at it is if you're coming to one of our sites, we want it to just work. Um, I know there's some other collectible sites out there um, on the stamp side, for example, where they also understand that people are searching for country and catalog number, but their, their search field isn't a box. It's a list of 20 different things that you need to select to find the right thing that you're looking for. So for me, it's always been really important that everything we build just works and that you really get that you know delightful, exceptional experience. And it makes it you know that much easier when you are focusing on those specific types of collectibles on each specific site. Well, I, I now if you didn't pay attention to what he he's he's let's relate this to eBay. I'm not here to bash. We're here to talk about hip, but I just want you to understand the difference here. He's done it from, I guess, the base side up. I don't have to worry about aspects that you would on eBay. I don't have to worry about filling in these extra fields. It reminds me personally what I, my experience has been on the site is more of how Amazon does it. I don't have to put in all these extra item specifics. Amazon's AI pulls that information. I don't have to ever worry about that. I'm never hassled for that. But the, but what you got with, with the hip from my personal experience is it, it just pulls it in. You can try looking yourself and, and you guys know I'm um, anal retentive on that stuff. And I, I've been messing with eBay search results forever. My, my search day on, on hip took one whole day to figure out what I thought of it. So compared to eBay's, it's, it's totally different. It's not forcing the buyer nor the seller to do all that extra work, I guess is my, my opinion. I'll say this one more time and then I'll hit him up with another question. I have never had a single issue that I can think of on the platform hip compared to the daily barrage from other platforms specifically. So anyway, uh, that, that, that's that's a good difference to me. Everybody knows headache, headache free is what you want. I, I'm just done with the headaches. I'm done with the headaches. And this is a perfect example of someone who did it from the IT side, the collector side. I, I just wished every site was that way because then, then they'd think like us. It takes a collector to know a collector. And, and uh, I, again, this is why Mark's on the channel today, because he, he thinks like I do. That's exactly what I would figure. AI or pull the information through through the system IT wise. There's no sense in having to enter the same stuff in multiple times. The photo aspect alone, as eBay is now trying to do as well. So, again, lots of options, in my opinion, uh, as, I, as we go with that. Now, I've got something else. We're going to veer off in just a second here. Well, let, let me do one more thing. I have a question already. Do you mind taking one quick question here? Sure. Um, Caleb wants to know, he tried to import through Hip Comics Star Wars cards, and it would not import them in. Um, are you talking about vintage Star Wars, like 1970s, 80s, um, original series like Tops, or are you talking about uh, trade card gaming? Um, I guess that would be the thing. Let's see if I can pop down to see where he's at. It are because uh, I know um, I got a list on some of it. Non sports trade cards are imported through the comic site. Is that not correct? That is that is correct. Yes. There's there's some nuances I think with our eBay sync, particularly because oh, you know, on eBay side they you know either change the categories at times or in some cases um, you know, things are in slightly different categories than what we're looking at. Um, but if there's any item that there's a category for on Hip Comic, uh, so certainly Star Wars cards would be items that um, would be appropriate for the Hip Comic website. If anyone's ever having any issues where you know they're trying to you know whether it's syncing from eBay or importing from a spreadsheet or any other of the options that we have, just reach out to our support team and. And usually it's a quick fix that we can make on our end, particularly on the eBay side, if it's just that they're in a category that perhaps we hadn't looked at before, which is either a newer category or a category just um, off of you know, you know the typical you know, tree structures that we're looking at. We can certainly make a quick update around that as well. So for, so from that, I would uh, take that check where you listed them at. You could have listed them in Star Wars category instead of the non-sports category would be maybe my guess on that. Um, I know eBay had moved. We had some Star Wars cards up to the, the blue series, red series, yellow, and the whole works. And they moved them, I think, to or they got it ended up into a Star Wars category that had a subcategory for cards, not necessarily a trading card category. Would that be assumption that would be maybe not imported because it's not non-sports anymore? That sounds like that could very be why we're not importing it today. I would think 
we'll obviously take a closer look, but if it is a Star Wars card and it's in the Star Wars category and then a cards category, that would be something that we would look to be able to think over as well automatically. So again, just any items like that, always just you know reach out to our support team and we could definitely you know, take a look at, at to why things aren't moving over. And if it's something that we should be updating on our end, um, we're quick to make updates around that as well. Yeah, because they they re you guys recently did a new push because I went from forty two hundred listings overnight once I re uh, reauthorized the token to eighteen thousand almost on the platform and big switch. So yeah, it was it was intriguing to see all the new items on there. Hopefully, uh, Caleb, that answers your question. I know I have some more questions from Applebee's. We will get back to you in just a minute here. We'll get a couple more questions for him specifically. Now, this is one of the, the aspects with everything going on in the reselling platform and reselling world in general these days. A lot of people are talking about getting a site and trying to create them. What would be the, what's your biggest hurdle, I guess, would be my biggest question on that. Where, where, where have you had the biggest trouble trying to break into the market of actually running these three fairly decent sized platforms of yours? So I'd say as far as um, biggest hurdle, not necessarily a, a hurdle per se, but it's kind of just, I would say, like the focus of where we have been to date and where we're going. So historically, we did focus primarily on the stamp side, just given my background, and I've been in that industry for so long. So from there, the approach we've always taken is to, you know, work directly with bringing on sellers so whether that's you know meeting them you know at, at conventions and and various different places or you know calling them directly being able to you know talk with sellers and just let them know what we're doing and what we're about um that's basically the approach that we've taken to bring on sellers to our platform and then pretty much the way that we have our marketing and everything built out is that once we're able to bring on sellers to the platform it always helps us to bring on additional buyers in particular because most of these sellers are obviously going to be selling other places as well and then their buyers are interested in person them. So I'd say historically, we really focused on that stamp side. And just given my background, um, we'd be able to, I'd say, move faster in that vertical than others. Now, what we're looking forward to in the other areas is really just making sure that we have those exceptional features, particularly for sellers and being able to help them to bring their inventory on. So for the comic side in particular, the comic book scanning feature that we have, that's actually gone through a few different phases. So we actually started working on this last year, um, again, based on the input we had from our sellers, uh, worked with a group of sellers as we continue to iterate that and fine tune it till we get to the latest version that we have now, which also, again, works on uh, whether it be tablets or phones very readily. So basically, I'd say the pieces that we've really been focused on is just kind of getting the information out there about what we're doing, what we're about, and then helping to show sellers that we're actually building tools that will help them. And I think a comment you made earlier about you know having that price threshold for when you list items, one of the things we've heard already from sellers that are now using our comic scanning feature is that exactly like you said, listing things individually doesn't necessarily make sense on other platforms. So in some cases, they would take 25, 50 comic books, just take a picture of it, create a listing. And it takes them the exact same time to then list those individually with us. And compared to other platforms, they see about you know two to three times the price on average for that group, because people obviously are going to spend more on the individual items that they're interested in than just a group. So it's more about being able to create those different features and then being able to just get that information out there and then showing sellers that we are building features based on their input, based on what it is that they're, they're looking to do to really help their businesses. And I would say for us, the big thing is not just building out features that just you know make it easy, for example, to like sync from another website, but to really make it easier for you to manage your business. So again, whether that's you know making it five to six times faster to, to list a comic book or making it a more richer experience because you can list a stamp and we'll fill in much of the information for you. That's really what we've been focusing on. And I'd say the you know the biggest hurdle again is just really being able to get that information out there to all those sellers so they understand what we're we're trying to do and then are be able to work more closely with them. Well, I'm going to piggyback uh, off and I have another question here on that. Now, you're working on verticals. For those of you, vertical, we're, we're increasing the same category upwards instead of going horizontal. So are you looking to horizontally branch off to, say, another platform or another venue from this to add some new like records or vintage jewelry? Or what, what, what do we see for a future and horizontal development? Right. Yeah, I'd say right now we're really focused on the three that we're in today. Um, but even I'd say within the next year, we're definitely looking at where we want to be next and where we want to build a marketplace next. For us, there's a couple of interesting things because there's obvious markets that 
are very large and heating up. A great example is sports cards. Um, but at the same time, there's multiple sports cards marketplaces as well. So there's already a fair amount of competition there. When you look at you know other areas, uh, for example, uh, video games and particularly graded video games, that's a much smaller market today, but also clearly heating up as well. I think a, a Super Mario 3 just sold for $385,000. Um, but in an area like that, there's really not that much competition on the marketplace side and lots of different things that we see that we are you know, doing today that similarly we could do in these areas. So we kind of take all those things together and then see what would make the most sense uh, for us when we think about starting a new site. And again, right now we're just focused on the three that we're in today, um, but we're certainly looking at the future, which ones we would get into and just kind of taking into account all those different factors. So I would I would take that to mean you want the best darn three sites you got before you worry about stepping forward. Is that you want to dominate those those sites and then go from there? Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. I, I think there's also just going to be some potentially unique opportunities for us um, if we you know are able to identify an area that does make sense where there is a lot of overlap in either whether it's the buyers or sellers or the technology itself. But right now we're primarily focused on definitely delivering the best experience in the three sites that we have. Well, let, I'm going to throw this out there because I, I asked this question of him just before the show, and I, I just want to put this out there. I, I was talking with Dom, and I know most of you folks know who Dom. In fact, I see Dom. Welcome, Dom. Another friend of the channel, another channel we watch. Um, he's been on my channel as well, as you guys know. Um, I was talking with him maybe a month or so ago. eBay pulled some of my comic books down. I ran this by, by Mark there. They were for Zeta, and I'm sure anybody who's a comic book uh, guy knows, very well-known master painter, trade card sets, the whole works. I've got probably three of his books here of, of compilation artwork. Um, adult comic-wise, most of the adult comics are, I consider it art. You know, the like a Frazetta with adult comics, just because it says the word adult on the comics, they ended them on eBay with no question, no nothing. It didn't show anything on the cover. From from our conversation, that would be something I wouldn't have a problem, and I could list directly on the platform instead of listing on eBay. That way, it's not going to cross populate back from hip back to eBay. So you've got another secondary option. And again, this is an option I will plan to use because they uh, they pulled them down right when I was starting. I have hundreds in that genre to list. So uh, again, that that is your take on it, and that is a uh, doable as long as there's nothing shown. Uh, cover wise or visually wise in the listings and it's a comic book comic book we're talking drawings right that is correct yes that's correct yes i just want to throw that out there because I, I know there's some bigger comic sellers who've had that exact same issue happen i think dom had one of his pulled down too if i'm not mistaken but the second they pull them down that means i don't list anymore and it just builds up a big stack of them so anyway um let's go on to another question here now, I've asked you guys this a few weeks back, and I was asked this very same question. This is one of those, you know, it's coming questions to me anyway. How much blowback did you get from eBay for the creation and uh, reaching out to them to actually uh, get access to their APIs? So I think just kind of overall, if you think about it, I mean, most sellers today are selling on multiple different channels and there's thousands and thousands of tools out there um, that help you to manage your inventory across the different platforms so really the way that you know we were looking at it in particular is the biggest thing for us is that you know, if we have a seller and they're selling on ebay and they're selling on any of our, our platforms at the end of the day the biggest problem for both us and ebay is going to be if you sell one item on one platform and then it's still listed on the other then you're going to have people who are, who are upset buyers um issues well just managing inventory and it's a larger issue so we really focused on the that syncing feature of being able to keep that inventory um in sync between the two platforms and that's really what for, you know for us i think makes sense and then again if you're looking at on the ebay side again it's helpful to then you know have listings that are actually still available and you know as we're growing more and more our business more and more items sell on our site um particularly compared to ebay particularly on our our stamp site we have I think probably most of our top 20 sellers sell at least the same amount that they sell on eBay with us. Um, so obviously a lot of inventory that's being sold. So if on eBay that inventory was remaining and it's not being you know closed accordingly, that would be an issue there as well. Yeah, now that was a question. I literally was, was going back and forth with a subscriber earlier, just before the show too, on can you compare your sales on eBay to to uh, HIP? Now I don't sell as much on HIP as I do on, on eBay. I've got people that have been following me on eBay for five, six, seven years, as I've talked probably longer than that. I've got 
probably two or three people that buy every other week and they have for geez probably 10 years now so again you you have to build stuff up but i can say from the folks i i investigated hip obviously i've on hip i can pretty much tell you the stamp guys do sell pretty close to the same amount even on ebay versus versus hip because the, the fo hip is is really tied to those folks who are heavy into the categories from my experience i saw stuff on hip that i don't get the sales on ebay because there's more specialized and in hardcore hardcore collectors on hip from my experience you know and they do routinely buy i do sell multiples to the same person and all that so i would honestly agree with that from my personal research on his site so again that's not me feeding a line that's literally what i come up with myself so on to another question here what about a uh, import from Amazon? There's so at the, yeah, at the moment, um, we don't have any automated uh, imports from Amazon, but what we do have is we have a very robust bulk lister feature. And the way that our bulk lister feature works is that if you have any spreadsheet at all, um, you can upload it to our site, you can map your fields and save a template. Um, so we do have a few people that have you know, inventory on Amazon, they just export that to a CSV file, they'll upload it to our site, map the field, save a template once, and then whether it's you know once a week or however often, just repeating that process, and it, it's very quick to do it that way. Essentially, within our bulk lister, there's an additional option that basically says, this is my entire inventory. Um, and if you check that off, we'll make sure that any existing listings will update, anything that's not in your file anymore will close, and then anything new, obviously, will create. So it's a, it's a rather easy way, whether it, it's uh, Amazon or, or your own website or any place where you have inventory, as long as you can export it, it's a relatively easy and straightforward process process that you can use um, to keep your inventory in sync. And then within our help section, we have a tutorial video that shows you how to do this, um, as well as obviously your text description for this as well. Yeah, the CSV file uh, is great too. If again, anybody has watched the channel, I have some videos on, it's basically the exact same process for mapping that he's discussing here as you would do for Shopify. So if you hook up, it's the same basic principle. Um, and I've had the just touch on Shopify just a minute here. Now, thinking about it, there's no need to have HIP hooked up to Shopify because if you're using eBay, it goes straight through eBay anyway. Um, but there will be some situations on Shopify. W is there any um, discussion possibly in the near future on just getting a quick API through Shopify to add it as a channel for those who may not do eBay, but yet have their own imported items, say with an ink frog to Shopify and then Shopify out to you guys? Right. So today, in addition to our book lister, we also have our own API. Um, so we are aware of, uh, uh, we're, we've worked with a few sellers as well. We either have their own developers in-house or have worked with some third parties to build tools um, to do exactly what you said and just you know sync from various different sites. Um, so that's always an option as well. Uh, we are looking in the future, probably I'd say next year, at being able to offer more ways to automatically sync inventory from more sources. Um, so certainly, you know, Shopify is one of the items on our radar, WooCommerce on our radar as well. So that's certainly something that we'd be looking at. Um, but definitely for anyone that is more technical or you know has a, you know, a third party that they're working with, could definitely use our API um, to easily manage your inventory that way as well. Yeah, that goes right back to like syncing and stuff. As I said, like with Shopify, you can get an API for anything hooked up, basically. So it, it's not a concern. It, again, if you're doing eBay, in my opinion, I had eBay, I had HIP hooked up, I had Shopify hooked up, I had it pumped out to a couple other locations from there. I've tested the whole thing. I've never had an issue. If you sell it on eBay, it removes it from HIP. If you sell it on Shopify, it's auto synced to eBay through Shopify, and then it's removed from HIP as well. So every way I've tried to see where there would be a, a failing point between connections and sync, I, I can't find one. As long as you've got your Shopify set up and your eBay, if you're importing, say, through Inkfrog to avoid the 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 deficiencies in eBay's API, you know, you'd be offset either way you go from my personal experience. I've done all that. I've had it all hooked up. I got videos with diagrams showing it all. So it, for those who ask that question, you, you don't need to worry about Shopify for keeping your eBay store open, in my opinion. And you can list directly on HIP. The, the, again, that goes back to you uh, getting into HIP. For those people who want to just list items on HIP, and then have those import to their store. So as he said, they will be working at it, or you can talk to the, their their IT department 
on actually getting those hooked up as well. Anybody can basically do an API. It's just coding. Um, there's some directions usually given. It might cost you a few dollars if you're doing something way out there, out the out of there. But Mark's got IT background as I do, so you know it, it's not a huge big process in my book. Um, would you agree it, it's pretty painless as long as you can state what you want, where you're coming from, and supply the required IT technical info from their side? Right. Yeah. As long as you have that, you know, IT technical know how. One of the other things, though, that you could also do, in particular, if you're looking to create listings directly with us and then have them on your own website, we also have an export feature. So if you have, you know, 10 or 10,000 listings, you can at any time just go into the members area, just select all of your listings at once, click the export button, and then we'll give you a file with all of your, your data for your listings as well, which is complete with the links to the pictures and everything. So you could also use that um, to be able to you know, take your inventory that you have on, on HIP and then you know, bring that to your own website as long as you, again, can you know, import CSV files there um, or any of these other options as well. Now, for those who don't know, uh, CSV files, probably you're using it like a way well, you can use probably what you want, but I always do the common kind of delineated ones. Um, that just means you're downloading an Excel or you can use Google Apps for all those out there. You don't have to have Microsoft to use any of the CSV files. Google Docs does it for free. Everybody can get a free Google Docs account. If I'm still, I'm pretty sure that's the case still today. Um, I'm a Microsoft person, so I do have all the, the Microsoft stuff here, but um, it's an easy process. It kind of reminds me, anybody who's done Amazon, I import up with CSV files. Well, let me ask you that now thinking about the Amazon. I sometimes, like every other one, will have a bunch that can get kicked out. Um, how how often does that happen if I'm uploading a CSV file and, you know, some of the listings have, you know, I'm over one comma or something and it bumped it out of right. the wrong category? Yeah, so, I mean, I think it depends. There's a couple of different things that we do, which is a little bit different than, I'd say, other platforms, which is, in some cases, like, you might have um, you know, a title that's too long. And on some platforms, that might just not create the listing for you. Um, or you might have um, a category that's wrong. In our case, what we try to do, again, going back to just making it easy, is we see if there is some sort of problem with the listing that you're trying to create. Is there just something that we can automatically do to fix it? Um, so a good example is on like our stamp site. Um, if you leave off the category, uh, we'll actually then automatically try to determine the category for you. And then basically what happens is we'll send you a report after you've uploaded your file and the report will have just as many lines as your original file did, but it'll just tell you what happened. So did we successfully list this? Um, did we successfully list it, but we changed something to make it work um, and information around that. And then if it doesn't work for some reason, because there was you know, a larger issue, then you'll see a note for that as well. So it's really easy. So in particular, like if you're listing you know, 200 items and then you see 199 items, you don't need to you know, try to figure out which one it is. You just download a report. You can see exactly what the item was that was missing and you'll get a pretty detailed message as well as to why that item was wasn't being able to be listed. Yeah, I think there's a few out there who have had the issue with Amazon. I, it's it's a nuisance because you never know what it is, and the report usually doesn't explain what the issue is. And I've spent 20 minutes on one listing going up to Amazon CSV file. So, only reason I asked that question here. Um, hang on, one second here. We've already addressed that one there. Now, this is a question I got, and I told you I was going to probably ask. This is the only question I gave Mark ahead of time here. Um, most of the sellers out there, and we, we talked about this, most sellers that I deal with aren't necessarily, Dom's a, a comic book guy, Dom Primetime Treasure Hunter. There's several others out here in the feed I can see as well who are comic guys or stamp guys like Duncan. For, for me, I could sell on all three of your sites. And I understand fully your, your approach, which I think is a good approach. I sell in niches. So for me, it, it makes complete sense. But for a lot of folks out there, and I know we talked about conversion and crossover rates and stuff like that, but a lot of people that I personally talk to, and I talk to a lot of people on, on here, would, would be more interested in like an all three platform instead of having to worry about. Now, I know we talked too about, is there going to be a way that they can link them all maybe at some point, whether they're separate sites, separate fees or not, it would be so much more convenient to eliminate the need to deal with three separate entities as opposed to one. Again, we're, we're, trying to save ourselves time and to automate everything and sync it all and all that kind of stuff. Is that, is that a, I know you don't have as much as, as you know, with crossover, but is that something that would be doable at some point going forward? 
No, I think that's, that's an excellent question. And kind of the way that I look about at it is even if you just look at the sites being separate, uh, one of the things for me that was really important was you know our branding hip. And, and, and where does that come from and what does that mean? So actually what I was trying to do when we created Hippie Commerce, I was trying to find just a really short word um, that would then be able to go with what the actual item was. So that's why it's hip stamp, hip comic, hip postcard. So instantly you're on a site, you know this is a site for comics, this is a site for postcards. So for me, that was really important. And I kind of equate it to even just the branding part. If you think about you know conventions, there's not really a collectibles convention, there are comic conventions, there are stamp conventions. So for me, it was always important that we do have the these you know, individual sites and then everything's completely dedicated for that. So with that in mind, if you look at the three sites that we are in today, even you know between stamps and postcards, we don't see that much overlap in the sellers that we do have today. Uh, it's probably about, I'd say 2% overlap in sellers between the different sites. So it's not something that we particularly put too much thought in today just because of the you know overlap that we do see. Uh, but definitely interesting to, to kind of hear that um, you and the people here today, um, that that's definitely something of interest. And the big thing for us is that we definitely listen to all the feedback that we have from our customers, whether they be buyers or sellers. And you know, I think that, that can kind of take its ways in, in a couple of different ways. So that might be something, you know, short-term solution we think when we're working with a specific seller or certainly like longer term, I can imagine, you know, to actually, to slightly related to this would be one of the longer terms we're thinking we're doing is having some more like single sign on type options. Um, so today you have a different logon for, for each of your sites, um, but we're soon, I'm not soon, but maybe like by the end of the year, we're trying to have you know additional sign ons, whether that be with Google or Facebook, so kind of helping you to link accounts that way and not have to remember additional passwords. So certainly an interesting thing to consider um, how you can kind of you know make it easier to switch between the site. So short answer, not something that we were currently thinking of, um, but even just getting the feedback from here today definitely helpful as we kind of you know focus on building out our roadmap and the next features that we have. Yeah, like not to bring Tom back in here, but he just said he's got his hip comics open today or yesterday. He sells all over the place too. Um, you get a good deal on something, you get a good deal on something. I don't really care. I used to just sell clothing. I don't sell clothing. You move and you, you bounce around with whatever's hot at the time. Um, let's hop to a couple questions. I don't want to get it too far behind because I can't go back beyond a certain point. Now, I have I think I brought this up maybe to Josh, which is another one of you, your guys. Very nice guy as well. Um, I think he was the first one I ever talked to from you guys. But um, I had talked about shipping labels, and that was literally the first question from Applebee's, I believe, up at the top. I can't see the question anymore, unfortunately. That's one of the drawbacks on, on these live chats. But on shipping labels, now for me, you can cut and paste, or as you get paid in PayPal, you just print your label from there if you wish. Now, unlike eBay, there's there's not a, a requirement that says I have to track everything. So I use stamps on a lot of things, just FYI. So, you know, you can set your, your fee and all that kind of stuff. Is, is there, uh, I guess, an interest to get a, a site option to actually ship from versus having to go somewhere or write out or cut and paste Right. Um, going forward. So yeah, that, that's a great question as well. There's a couple of options that we do have today. Um, so one of the options is that if you are in your order section, right in your order section, uh, we include the link to PayPal. So in any case, if you have an order and you want to create a shipping link, if you just click on that link to PayPal, it'll take you directly to the transaction on PayPal. And on that page, there's a button to buy and print the shipping label. Um, so we have a fair amount of sellers that take that, that approach. Another approach that we have um, that you can use today is that because everything is paid through PayPal, um, there's many different services that you can use that you can import entire PayPal order histories, which basically imports the entire histories from any of the hip platforms. Um, so we ourselves, we have a small division where we do our own direct buying and selling. So on the comic book side in particular, um, we have long boxes of items. We use our comic scanning feature and sell them. So in those cases, what we do is we use a program called um, shipping easy. It's part, I believe it's now part of ship station. There's a few different versions. They're almost all owned by the same people. Uh, but basically within that program, what you can do is just link your PayPal account. Um, so basically you just go in, click a button, all of your then hip comic in this case orders would show up complete with the complete order details, the addresses of the buyers that it needs to be sent to all the information is there. You can just print the shipping labels. You can manage it that way. So that's a, a solution that we recommend to higher volume sellers. Again, it's not directly integrated into our platform today, but through this PayPal link that you can do, it, it makes it very easy to work within those platforms. So as far as building direct you know, labels within our site itself, um, we're probably not necessarily at the volume yet 
um, where that would make sense for us. We have talked to a couple of the larger shipping partners, and most of them are looking for, yeah, as a platform or marketplace, if you have somewhere near a thousand sellers that would be actively using this. Um, so we're not quite there yet, kind of even you know working on that that you know side of working directly with these places. But there are definitely options today that make it an easy process, particularly using that PayPal import. Yeah, and I just saw literally a, another comment asking that very same question from Jackass Retro up here too. So that to me, it's it's basically like using pirate ship, but it's just yes, another exactly. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure pirate ship works exactly the same way. Yes. Yeah, ex exactly. So for the I got a pirate ship. I think everybody out there, or most uh, most everybody that I talk to, most often do as well too. Hey, Brahma, how you doing, Brahma? Good to see you back in the house. Um, again, so you've got the same basic options wherever you're at. It takes me, I, I have some uh, pre-stamped with my return address on them. I just write out a name or I cut and paste it on a sheet if you got a bunch. And you can just print it up on uh, 30 uh, uh, up uh, MS, um, what is it, uh, Microsoft template. 2032, I think. It's a template. It's 30 ups, and you can just print them that way. You can, wherever you drop your label into, too, you can keep rerunning that same sheet through the printer, and you never waste the label because you just drop it in the spot you want. So I use that sometimes, too, for those of you who, you know, who, who know what I'm talking about. I guess sometimes everybody isn't up on Microsoft forums, but um, 30 up sheets, you can get 30 labels just to stip, uh, stick on a regular envelope, postcards, stamps. I just buy a 500 count box of either A6 envelopes or a 500 count box of business and pretty much all the paper items that I sell on HIP goes through one of those, just like I said. So you can even get them pre-printed with your return address label for almost nothing these days. So, I mean, comparatively with the amount of time I've got to click retry on say eBay, when the, the bulk uh, shipping label doesn't work, it, it's, it's quicker for me to write them out on hip most of the time. And I'm not exaggerating. Everybody knows exactly what I'm talking about. Or as it's switching from your stated first class and mysteriously it shows it being billed at priority. I haven't had to deal with any of that kind of garbage at all on, on hip. Um, so again, as I've said in, in other videos, there, there isn't much to it. There's no, there's no aggravation, I guess is the biggest point. And I, I'm, I'm one to get away from that these days. Um, Let's see, because I know I had some more questions in here. If you give me just a second to pop back up here and bounce around. Good evening to everyone. Uh, okay, well, there was another question. I, I knew it was up here somewhere. Photo-wise, real picture, real photo postcards obviously sell on the platform. What about the photo aspect itself? Let's say I've got CDVs or I've got cabinet cards snapshots from 1910 i just got a big huge lot of photos what do you have that direct import for photos there's at least two questions i've seen either here or on the feed itself so uh, as far as uh, direct import and photos yeah direct import uh do you mean to as far as listing them or well i mean i i, I don't think any of my photos have direct imported from ebay is, is that one of the categories that you are importing uh that's a direct sync from yeah. There, yeah, so we have on hip postcard. We we don't have photos um, per se. We have the real photo postcards, um, but we're we still look at photos as kind of a, a different category. So today we're not importing. I think there's like a separate yeah photos category on eBay, and we don't have an equivalent category on hip postcard today. One of the things, as we were mentioning earlier, that we are also always looking at is you know being able to you know stay within our verticals versus building new marketplaces. Um, but in some cases there are you know clear overlaps that make sense for us. So I think as you were mentioning your inventory increased earlier on, on early in the year on hit postcard is because we expanded the ephemera categories that we were importing to have more you know paper products on, on postcard. That being said, things like you know movie posters and just um, direct photos aren't categories that we have set up today, um, but certainly something that you know we're always looking at as well. But the short answer is for today that those items wouldn't be sinking over from you. That answers hopefully a few other questions there. Hang on, I see Netherlands there in the house today too. I see you, Brahma. Hang on just a second there. I know I didn't do many call outs. I think the discussion here is on the site and that's where we're gonna tie it to as much as possible. I see several people saying they're opening one up already. Yeah, now here's another question on on um, syncing wise. If, if you go to, why don't you tell them how quick and easy the sync is honestly because it, it, there's not much to it. 
Yeah, if you're interested in, in having your inventory keep in sync uh, with your eBay inventory, basically right when you go to open a store with us, um, I believe the last step it will ask you if you have an eBay store. If you do, you click a button. Um, you'll go to register um, your the sync on eBay site itself. You'll be returned to our site. And then that's it. I mean, it, depending on how many listings you have, it might take a little bit longer to import. Um, but honestly, you know, the entire process of opening a store and even syncing your, your inventory should probably take you about two minutes, I would think. Th that's probably legit. Um, Marty, uh, hang on, let me pop back over here. Jiminy Flip It, Marty there is in the house, another channel, fellow channel of us. Um, he's got a question on uh, print ads, and he has been emailing, I guess it looks like back and forth a little bit on print ads. Print ads, I have print ads up. I've listed some from the Victorian era and the Victorian trade cards. Mine have imported. Um, he's talking about like the other categories and like collectibles, advertising probably, and then the specific is, are those, it, it crosses into trade cards depending on the age of it. Is that another area where there could be some, some movement? Because it kind of does tie in, I guess, in my opinion, at least it does. Yeah, I think it depends. There's there's kind of two two different things around that. One is just in general what what categories we have today. So in general, if you go to hit postcard and you go to our ephemera category, you'll see we have subcategories. So any subcategories that do exist there where you have listings, those would be fine to list with us. Then the kind of the second part of that question is when we're you know looking to sync items over and match them up with eBay categories. In some cases, unfortunately, the way that eBay's categories are defined because they are open to all collectibles, they're categories might actually have different things um, and it wouldn't be specifically of one type. Um, so I know some of the advertising pieces um, could be things that aren't just like paper advertising and so forth. Again, that's just a, a, an example I'm using, but I know that specifically we had some issues where we'd like to be able to bring items over automatically, but we can't because we can't distinguish the you know paper type items versus the non-paper type items. That, that that makes perfect sense. Now, with a lot of stuff like that, it, it, it's going to come down to where you list it and what you define the item. Again, I've listed print ads from the Victorian area and Victorian advertising because the graphics on the print ads match the graphics on the Victorian trade cards. Again, I'm, I'm like probably in the top three people that sells on eBay and Victorian trade cards. And that's just the way the same collectors collect those, just like... Um, die cuts have you ever seen i've got thousand two thousand die cuts on there it's the same collectors that collect them so it, it, to understand you, i guess you got to be a collector for those of you because i do see a few comments to understand the breakdown that marks uh, what hip's doing with this because again I, I try to keep two items that tie together for one line and i don't try to mix and match them obviously i sell in different niches so but if, if you're tying it to like a paper postcard I run into trade cards in postcard lots all the time. I run into print ads that people have cut up and they stuck into postcard um, uh, top loaders or postcard sleeves and stuff like that. So I get it. And hopefully everybody out there understands the the aspect on that. If you're not in niches, it, it's it's different from just randomly going out and just selling whatever you get. Niche market in, in my book it is totally a different way. I can sell things and on religiously for, you know, insane money um, in niches when it's not possible any other time because it's like dead or slow or everybody spent all their money. Again, it's collectors collect. And I've always said that you're always going to have, have that range. Let's, I should have gotten another question ahead of time. I know there's still a bunch in here. Uh, so hang on just a second here. I just had one in my feeds moving a little quicker than I have time for. Hang on, I just saw another one. That's the purchase label. We already talked about that. Oh, um, price-wise, this was another one. On eBay, I can look up sold prices. What's what's go over that if what what aspects you guys have or what aspects you may actually attach to that aspect right. in the future. So today we actually have on hip stamp, we actually have a subscription for buyers. Um, it's a small fee and we call it our hip values. And the way that our hip values work is that we basically compute for a stamp based on the country catalog number and condition. What is the average current selling price based on all of those that we've sold historically? And the great thing about our hip values is that if you have the hip value subscription, basically when you're searching right within the search results under any price, you'll see what our hip value is, but you don't just see the value value, you'll also see how many specifically we sold. And you can actually click on that to then view the entire history of everyone that we've ever sold um, going back you know, 
five, six years now. So for example, if you search for US number one stamp on, on hip stamp and you have a hip value subscription, right under it, you'll see the hip value, which I think a used one right now, I wanna say is $260. And I think we've sold something like 360 of them. So you can actually click on that and then you can review the individual ones with the pictures um, to match, you know, see one that has, you know, similar centering and then, you know, similar cancels to really make sure that you've got a really great idea of what the price is based on that. So today we have that on hip stamp. We don't have that on hip comic yet. One of the things that we're working on or two of the things that we're working on in, in hip comic is one, just pricing data in general, um, which is something that we're looking to tie back to our catalog. And then in the future, uh, as we continue to build up more sales as well, I'll offer something similar as far as what we're doing on the hip stamp site with hip values on the comic book side as well. But, but that's a good point. On let's say you're on eBay and I'm not again we're not I'm just using this as an example so you can get the difference here on eBay if you sell something or you're getting an offer coming and let's let's go at an offer because this just happened to me and it was an item that I personally have sold before I looked at Terapeak to see how many of those were left and you know how it gives you those selling on eBay how it gives you an average sale price now if I went by eBay's average sale price for that item I would have lost around 25 bucks the, the the information isn't correct. Now, looking at Terapeak on that example, the one I'm talking about, I was the only one who sold that item. So where did the average sale price come from? How can the average sale price be less than the item that I actually sold, the only one of those items? So it, with, with HIP, what I have come to, to realize on most of this is the information is relevant to the actual items because it's based on Again, Harrison's catalog or whichever whichever um, uh, number your system using. Harrison's is usually what a lot of folks use, or Stanley Gibbons, as we were talking about, which is mostly U European. Duncan probably uses Stanley Gibbons. So I mean, the, the information is relevant versus who knows what it is. Um, that, I guess that's the take on it. It's another reason why I pay for uh, Pop Psych for those of you who followed me on for records, for example. It gives me pertinent information just tied to the niche that I am looking for. I'm not given random information. I'm not shown stamps that aren't the stamps. As Mark had said just a while ago, if you look for Scott's number one on eBay, you might get a ton of other stuff that's totally unrelated. If I go to hip, Scott's number one is Scott's number one. You know, there's no no discrepancy on it. It's U.S. Scott's number one. It's the first U.S. postage stamps, one and two, Franklin and Washington. It's It's the, everybody wants one of those in their collection. Those are probably the two most sought after in decent condition. Um, not the most, I guess maybe the Zeppelins or something, you know, or, you know, a $5 Columbian exposition or something. But anyway, I, I digress on that one there. But hopefully you guys get the difference on the whole aspect of the site versus uh, just a random site with a bunch of stuff like eBay or even Amazon. Um, it, it, I guess it's the AI that I, the aspect that it automatically pulls that out. Uh, the information and it's relevant information. That's why I do pay. I don't pay for worth point, but I, I pay for niche relevant uh, sites that tie to my niches. So just like some of the railroad collectible sites and things like that there. Um, hang on just a second here. I know we've got some more questions. So if there's anything you want to shoot out for just a second here, I was looking for one question, Mark, if you want to take a few moments and shoot something out while I find the other question. Oh, um, here, here's another one on, on platforms. So if you want to sync from each platform, you have to do it separately. So that is correct. So yes, you'd sync okay. from uh, hip uh, stamp, postcard, or comics, or all three of them. It would be three separate tokens you have to accept and bounce back over to eBay. So um, again, that is the answer. That is correct, right, Mark? Yes, that's correct, yes. Uh, will there be a hip open? Somebody's asking like a hip uh, eBay open. I'm sure they're they're talking about where they could actually meet you or you have any functions that you guys do ever. So um, historically, we we have gone through some different conventions. Uh, so um, before the pandemic, we had gone to a couple of stamp conventions in particular, uh, as well as comic conventions. At the stamp conventions, we try to um, you know book some time to have a room to show people how to you know use the site in general. Um, so I think now as things are you know starting to open back up, that's certainly something that we'd be looking at. So I don't think we would be doing something like dedicated to to ourselves, but we'd most likely be at you know conventions and trying to put some things together there um, to be able to, to meet with our members and, and potential members as well. Okay, I found the one I desperately wanted to answer because this one, there's a couple of the same ones, a cell phone app. 
So yes, so we are close to having a cell phone app. Uh, basically, the way that we've built out our website is it's very mobile responsive. Um, and in particular, you'll notice if you're using um, our comic site and you're using the um, scan, the comic scanning feature, it'll work really well on, on your phone. Um, we actually are pretty close. I'd say within the next few months, um, we're planning to, to have an app um, that you'd be able to install on your phone. For anyone who is specifically interested on the comic book side, we actually have an app that you can install just to use to scan um, comic books. Uh, we don't heavily promote it because literally that's all it does is it just lets you scan the comic books and create listings. Um, but if that's something you're interested in, um, definitely just reach out to our support staff and, and we can get you set that way as well. But again, in, in the next few months, we're looking to have uh, an app that you would be able to install on your phone that would give you more of the functionality of the site as well. It is it, it will not be a full feature. So the one the one that we're planning to have um, in a few months would be full feature. It'll have all the the features of our site today. Basically, the way that we're looking at it is um, we're building out newer, uh, even more of kind of phone native pages that we have, and then essentially within the app itself, it'll just uh, fall back to the mobile responsive pages that we have on any of the pages that haven't been built out specifically for that. So we're, we're about a few months away from that, uh, but we do have one which you can use specifically just for, for scanning the comics today. But again, as you mentioned, not a full feature, so not something that, that we heavily promote today. But particularly for sellers that are listing a large volume of comics, even just having you know the icon on your screen you can click to and get to uh, definitely helps there. So we're happy to, to anyone who reaches out to us, get them on board with that as well. Let me just shout out on the difference here. Now, I, I hear complaint. I'm not a phone person. I don't do the phones for eBay at all because I could no way do it with the volume we do or the stores we do. But I, I hear complaints every day, and I'm sure there's probably one on, on one of my videos right this second I haven't even seen yet that just was posted on eBay's app. eBay's app is not full feature. It's missing a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, there's certain items that people can't even list right now. The, the the idea that that hip's going to be full feature for me is a big deal because I don't like not being able to do something. Again, that's why I don't use the phone because it's not full feature. So for those of you who don't get full feature, that means everything on the site itself you can do on the phone. You're not going to be confined, not being able to do some like a markdown or a price or a relist or any of that stuff. If you can do it on the site, full feature means you can do it across the board on your phone. Again, ease, time it takes. You want to cut all that stuff down. A full feature app is way better. Like I have people tell me right now that they've got to, they started on their phone and I'm sure somebody will tell me that here too. They start the listing on their phone with the photos and then they have to go to their, their laptop to actually finish it using eBay's app because it's not full feature. So that's one of those things that drives me crazy. Now, Annie on here, uh, long time, long time flight. We're hitting the, the eight o'clock mark, uh, eight o'clock mark, uh, Mark. Uh, you got a few more minutes or how's your time? Yeah, going? I have a few right? minutes, yeah. Certainly. Just We hit a couple questions and we'll, we'll cut it off there. I don't want to keep you all night. Um, Annie, very long time follower here. Um, another channel as well. Annie's got a channel, which I've watched some of hers. Um, she's got a question on, again, she sells multiple things. She probably has comics, cards, and stamps. Um, would there be a possibility for like three sites for the price of two or, or some sort of discount going forward for any of those that may be interested? Because I've seen quite a few questions on two different sites, three, how many would I need? And would there be anything going forward if say you have somebody wanting all three sites? Yeah, I would say in that case, definitely just reach out to us. Uh, we don't have anything official right now as far as like a package deal, um, but definitely, you know, for any individual seller, particularly new sellers, um, at times, you know, we might be able to to work with you, particularly as you get started with us, and you know, in, in particularly in cases where you're doing maybe a lower volume on one site, we definitely want to be able to work with you to make sure that um, if you have items that are able to be sold on our site, uh, we find something that will work for you. So I would definitely say if that's the case for you, again, just reach out to our, our support team and we'll, we'll definitely follow up with you from there. But certainly something that, that we would definitely be be open to looking at, particularly yeah, uh, on you know sellers that are having items across these different sites. So. Okay, now now this one's going to taxes and I see at least a cup, two, th maybe three on there. Um, tax wise, can you go into what documents, what is reported, what, what your basis is for that. Right. So the way that we look at it is we're a little bit different than other marketplaces because we are not involved in any way in the payments. Um, so again, all the payments are going directly from PayPal. So from the buyer to the seller. So as far as actual collecting of payments, we, we don't collect any payments that include taxes. Um, but uh, to be able to help you facilitate 
you know, staying compliant with all the various different, you know, laws across the country and globe. We have different um, taxes that you can add um, from your settings. So for example, if you're uh, in North Carolina and you want to charge sales tax on anyone in North Carolina, um, you'd be able to go and just, you know, set that up as an option. Um, so it's certainly up, up to you as the seller um, to put whatever options that you want. We provide options for you by default. And if there's anything that's, you know, ever a specific county has a different rate and we're not reflecting that, again, just reach out to our team. We can add that for you. And then that'll automatically charge the tax for for you and but then it's up to you to then be able to you know provide that tax as far as any documents that get filed or anything like that um because payments do go through paypal um if you hurt, hit certain limits you know paypal will, will file different documents and give you i think the 1099k and all of that uh, but anything from hip itself um we're not involved in the payment and, and tax piece directly yeah and that was another question on state internet sales tax which we have to pay across the board um, that gets to be an issue with some folks because you'll have to manually do it depending on it, which means you have to have a reporting method for like say California. Um, you're familiar with how eBay does it, I'm sure. Yes. It, it, is that you, something? Yeah, I was gonna say, so for some of the, basically if you're the marketplace itself directly collecting it, there's different thresholds that you have to hit. But as a seller, it, it depends on the volume that you do. So some states have, you know, you need to be doing over 200 orders and over $100,000 in that state specifically. Um, and if you're not meeting that threshold, then it might not be something that you need to file if you're doing it on your own. Um, certainly if you are hitting those those thresholds, then we do provide you with reports. Um, so at the end of the day, you can always, um, we have a reporting section, you can download any of the sales that you had, um, which will include all the individual items. That being said, obviously because the actual payment's going through PayPal, that's gonna also give you the most you know, reliable information of exactly what you were paid. If there was any refunds and pieces like that, that would be the, the best place to go for information for such reporting purposes as well. Yeah, at and the end also, of the I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, and then also specifically with that, when an order does go through to PayPal, um, the tax part will show separately on PayPal as well, which makes it easier to report on. Yeah, that's what I was just going to address on. It's just like um, prior to eBay picking it up where you'd have to go in and print out your, your monthly statements from there. I, I import my PayPal when I'm getting PayPal payments like from HIP and stuff into Excel. And then I can just auto sum my tax column, pull out anything that wasn't a payment to me immediately. And I can get a sum from there. It does get uh, state designations because it ties in the address of the person that's uh, purchasing it from you. Again, with with your I'm not I'm not we don't want to get into a big tax conversation, but it's not it's not as easy as eBay, but it's not as hard as you would think because there are certain amounts of limitations that you have to meet for you to have to pay that specific amount. It does go by state by state. Yes. I have an account, so I you know I'm a little different than than most people. We've actually got a couple accounts, but the, the point now before I forget on here, Annie did reach out a couple months ago about getting on there and they said they would not do it is what she's saying. So is there maybe somebody she might need to talk to about possibly because she wants to do stamps and postcards, it looks like. As far as uh, uh, like a combined, um, like a discount for being on multiple sites. Yeah, like I said, I mean, that, that's not something that we've done historically, um, but certainly, you know, definitely something that would be open to. So, yeah, I think um, if feel free, you can mention my name, reach out to our, our team, and then we'll make sure that we, we take a look at that. Well, thank you. That I think that will answer. I've I've talked to Annie for about three years now. So, hang on, I saw another one right here. So just then on uh, the postcard site, do we need to list them directly on HIP? Now, if, if like I talked about a few minutes ago with, with the comic aspect, if I can't list it or I don't want to list something on eBay, you just don't do the sync part. You'd go straight to HIP. And it's really easy to list on HIP, in, in all honesty. So you could just go to HIP and list anything you want uh, above and beyond anything you have on eBay. So you, you've got both options there, CVS file upload or whatever the case. It, it's pretty much just like most all the sites on there, except it works much better than than say eBay or Amazon with um, the kickbacks from the CSV file. I always hate the cringe when the, the, the kickback report shows up from Amazon and know what I'm gonna have to try and figure out on that there. Um, and now here's another question here, which I think is important one I wanna get to, and then we'll probably end it out there because we're going past the hour here now. Um, I've got a couple uh, eBay accounts. I've got several stores. There's other people in here as well. Tor says he's got a couple of stores. What happens with two eBay stores? Is there an option to sync them up to the very same eBay postcard site? So if I want to import from two to one, is that an option uh, to set up like a special API where that can be done? 
So if you're you're doing that through our functionality, that wouldn't be an option. What would be an option in that case would be just have two accounts with us as well, and then you can you know, sync one to each of the different ones. Um, what we do have is some other sellers that have used our API um, to then you know sync multiple different sites to the same site that way. But that was something that they they built out custom. So the easiest thing would be if you do have you know two different accounts um, with eBay and just have two different accounts with us as well, and then, then you can handle it that way. You'd pay twice though. Yes, that would be correct. Yes. So, so I'll give you a I'll give you a better break on that one for those folks asking that question there, uh, Tor. If if you want to do it and not have to pay again, I'm not trying to cut you short or, or undersell this the site, but for those folks who don't want to have to deal with that and have to worry about two different sites, you can literally save and download your listings from eBay, and you can actually upload them to your other eBay account, just the items that you would want to list on there. If the 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 deciding factors that you don't want two accounts. I, I like it simple, easy. So you can just switch the the items from one account to another account on eBay. It, it's not that big of an ordeal. If you've got like Ink Frog, you, it would be worth you getting a month worth of Ink Frog to say import a, a ten thousand listings in Ink Frog, import them or export them back out to the same account. So now you've got all those postcards or whatever in one account, and then you can sync it up. You know, you can do that at any time too. There's no, there's no time frame it takes. You can import or add things to eBay, and it'll automatically sync. So if I upload a CSV file to my eBay account right now, after I've already, you know, got my my hip hip uh, site, everything I import is going to automatically be pulled to hip either way. So I mean, you know, that that's my that was that's what I would personally do and recommend. Again, cost wise, I know a lot of folks out there are are struggling. So you know, that would be my personal take on that. So. You know, maybe not, you know, the best answer for you guys, but I think that would be the, the best bet for my 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 subscribers here. So um, somebody's asking another question. Let's see where that went now. I, my feed keeps moving down on me. Um, what are HIP's marketing plans? Okay, now Annie's got one on the marketing plans going forward. What, then that's a good question. What about bringing traffic to the site, marketing and all that kind of thing? Where, where do you see yourself again uh, there's a lot of folks that have followed me for a long time who aren't in my patreon group who may not know who you are i think there's quite a few folks in the house now who have channels that you know there might be the first time they're hearing about you what's what's going on with marketing ploy plans and things like that Right. So historically, um, we focused most of our marketing effort kind of on, on the Google side. And then you and I were talking about this earlier, but historically also HipStamp has really been our main focus uh, up until recently, just given my background. So that's where the majority of, of our traffic is today. That being said, now that we've started to launch these key features um, to help buyers and sellers, particularly on HipComic, really focusing on you know additional marketing there. Um, so just recently, we started expanding our marketing effort. So we're doing more with Google. Uh, we're doing a lot more with Facebook now as well, um, even you know Instagram and other things. So we're doing a lot more marketing around that. Uh, holistically, uh, we're going to be doing more with just like content in general, like on our sites. So we don't have a blog on our sites, um, but we're going to be doing more information around that. So there's more content on our sites, which also helps see, help to drive traffic as well. Um, and then even things like looking at you know print print advertising. So on the stamp side, we're in a couple of different you know, stamp publications. Uh, so we're definitely looking to you know, significantly expand our marketing from what we've done historically, and I'd say particularly on the comic book side as well, and then you know, postcards as well. Again, given you know, stamps were the majority of our focus uh, up until recently. Okay, now I got just one more real quick one here, which um, the, basically if it's in the postcard category already, it automatically imports, correct? Yes, that's, that's correct. Yes. And anything under stamps, again, is going to import, correct, as well? Yes, that's also correct. Yes. And, and the same thing goes for comic books. So if it's below, if it's a subcategory on eBay for comics, stamps, or postcards, it's automatically imported. Now, does yes. that go, I never look, does that go for the supply subcategory and stamps, too? So you do, um, like, um, new inserts for the, the albums and things like that, too? Yes. Yeah. So we have a, a publications and supplies category. Yes. There you go. So that that should pretty much answer those other questions on there. Um, what about immediate payment on offers? They do not have to pay. I, I don't know if there's an option for that, but I never force anybody to do that. Is there an option to force them to immediately pay on an offer if they accept an offer? I don't think there is. Is that... 
Not on an offer, no. So if you're just checking out for fixed priced items, you have to pay immediately. Um, if it's an auction or an offer, um, yeah, then you have time to pay after that. Our official policy is that um, unless you've arranged it with the seller, it should be paid within five days. Uh, and then our team will, will follow up accordingly from there as well to, to help ensure that things are paid. And then obviously we send out automated payment reminders as well. Yeah, I uh, most of my, I want to say probably like 65, 70% of all the items I've sold on HIP have been an offer. And just like on eBay, I don't force anybody to pay right away. I, I don't, you know, I don't need the money right now. I don't, you know, I'm not going to be worried about a $10 card or something if it doesn't show up immediately. So I don't really worry about that. Again, it depends on where your state, where, what your state of business is. You get paid directly. It's the old school days of being able to resell and get your money immediately is, is I think the biggest take and what surprised a couple of the folks I know who went over recently um, to get it. Um, again, I know everybody, I liked PayPal. I never had an issue with PayPal, honestly. They've saved me many, many times in the past when somebody opened a BS case or something like that. So I'm comfortable with PayPal. And I know a lot of people are, a lot of people are uh, not wanting to go to manage payments. So, I mean, it, it's a big plus to me uh, to, to, to push this because again, a lot of folks are in, are, they can't wait five days for eBay to pay you or six days for it to post or seven days for, from the time you, you sold it to the time it hits your bank account. You know, PayPal is convenient in the whole works as well too. So um, I see, hang on one more second here and we'll get one more and then I'll cut it off there. We're at the quarter mark. I don't want to keep you all night here. Is there any algorithm which controls traffic to your listings? For example, eBay sales slow significantly if you don't do, um, if you don't list consistently. So now they're going back to search. That's more tied to Cassini's little secrets in there, I would guess. Yeah, on our on our site, we do take into account like different factors as to how we show the listings. Um, so in particular, like for example, like auctions will will show primarily before you know fixed price listings and things like that. Um, so yeah, we take into account a few different things. Um, basically, at the end of the day, we want to be able to show the buyer like the the item that's going to be most relevant to them um, that they would be most likely looking to purchase. I think the search results work so much better than on eBay, in all honesty. I mean, try it yourself. You know, I'm not just speaking out here. Look up the same thing, say, on Hip versus eBay on, say, Hip Comic, Hip Stamp or something, and, and see for yourself because, you know, it, it is more relevant. You're not going to get a pair of shoes when you're looking for a poster stamp or a comic book, you know, um, an old Red Wing Western comic or something like You're not going to get shoes, you know, so that that's a big plus in my book. And I, I see I'll look up something and, and I'm trying to find a price on a stamp or something. And there'll be stuff, you know, you have to get sourced down. You have to click the stamp category. You might have to click two or three more categories just to get the relevant information. And I don't see that problem on hip in all honesty. So uh, that's, that's just my take on it there. Um, we'll probably cut it off at there. I, I've, I know we still have some more questions. Maybe we'll, we'll have them back at another time here. Um, do another, another interview. We're running a little longer than, than uh, I, told him initially we'd stay on. So if you have any final thoughts here, Mark, or anything else, um, we'll cut it off after that. Um, you got anything else you want to add to oh. that? The other thing I would, I would add is, yeah, no, definitely. Um, thank you very much for, for having me on. Um, and like I said, one of the biggest things is, is I, I, exactly like you said, you know, these sites that we're collectors building these sites for collectors. So any of the feedback, uh, including all the feedback that everyone shared here, you know, very thankful for that. It, it's always incredibly helpful for us. So yeah, I'd love to, to come back another time if you, if you got more questions and, and you'll have me. So yeah, thank you very much. And thank you well, everyone here for participating today. Yes, very much. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for your time. There are some links down there that will get you three free months of service that they supplied for me. Now, I will get an affiliate link if you get a store and import a set amount. So, uh, you know, I'm only promoting this because I do honestly believe in it. You, I think, know that I've talked about this for quite some time about the site. I don't talk about anything I don't use. I use the site use it for a while. It's paid months worth of our bills from the site. Um, again, I got 18,000 items almost on there. I use it. I check it every single day of my life since I've started using the site. It's not BS. Again, you, you've heard it from him. That he's an IT guy. He's a collector. He, he, the site in my book is built for niches. It's built for collectors more so than, than any other aspect of a site. Again, they're going vertical. They're delving in deep to these categories. So if you're a comic guy, a stamp guy, a postcard guy, I personally would say the sites are for you. It's been beneficial to me, honestly, for more than a year. And, you know, I haven't had any issues or headaches. So 
I'll let it go with that. Again, one more time, thank you very kindly for coming on, Mark. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I know we didn't get to quite a few of the questions as I always do, but we'll try to answer them honestly, sincerely, and give you the most important information. So I thank you all for coming on and I hope you all have a good evening here.